Mm. Uh, hi, Jara. We are very glad to invite you here as our curator for the public private in Pong Society. And uh, this is your first curated show in China. And we want to ask what would be the difference uh, from other shows in other countries? Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, I'm very happy to have been invited to curate this project, like you mentioned, public-private here at the Pond Society in Shanghai. Um, it's the first project that I've done in mainland China. Um, and also, it's also the first, I would say, quite expansive painting exhibition that I've curated independently. Um, one of the things that was very unique to this exhibition is that it is a group of artists who are at different stages in their career, but between the ages of early 30s to early 50s, I was very interested in an exhibition that, you know, really was thinking about painting now, thinking about the different ways artists who are living across different um, locations in the world are thinking of this um, subject of painting. Painting is a genre of art that has existed for centuries. It's always been redefined and evolving and recreated and rethought through by artists, particularly people who focus on painting. In relation to um, how the show is different or the context of working in mainland China, I think because of the universality of painting, as I mentioned, it's something that exists everywhere. Um, I was very interested in how this global perspective could speak to um, a local audience here in Shanghai um, to speak to also painters here in particular, um, and just to really think about the different themes that even though we're sort of, um, or even though artists are thinking about themes that are very individual to them, this is something that speaks to all of us. Um, so that's certainly one of the exciting prospects and um, ambitions for the show, that it, it is something that people, particularly uh, an audience here in Shanghai, can identify with things that... Um, resonates with them in the work of these artists. Um, in terms of how it's different, um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like exhibitions travel and they move and, you know, different people engage with them. Um, it's, it's, I haven't worked differently to how I've, I've worked in the past, whether it's an exhibition that is painting, sculpture, performance art, um, you know, these kind of things. Um, I've always been dealing with like modern and contemporary art for the last 10 years, more than 10 years. Um, I've always been interested in exhibitions that are heavily researched. So there's a lot of um, research into not just the particular artist that I'm thinking about, but the wider context of the subject. Like I said, painting, history painting, with this show we're looking at different genres. Um, and also having a close conversation with artists um, where possible. A lot of artists were also showing, it was the first time for everyone showing in mainland China for the first time or new to show in here. There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of curiosity. Um, and I guess, you know, as people who work in this field, whether you're an artist um, or a curator or an exhibition manager or owner of a space, you know, we live in a world where we're all exchanging anyway. So these exchanges are more meaningful that what travels, it finds new um, ways for people to experience it. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I, I was thinking and, and com coming here and working here for the first time. Okay, well, first of all, for practical reason, um, there are 12 artists in the show and we're working with quite a specific space, quite a specific size of space. Um, and as the conversations were developing with your team here at Pond Society, with Irina Stark, our advisor also, um, who was working on the show, it became, when we started inviting artists and seeing who was available, who could make work, who could um, show in the time frame of the exhibition, as I was going through the artist list, there seemed to be a clear divide between artists who were working in a more um, figurative portraiture style and artists who were moving between landscape, um, abstraction, and still life. And because a lot of the artists, some of them were beginning to work on quite a large scale for the first time. For example, Ulala Imai, actually the beginning of her 
still life painting practice. Um, she was working quite small. And then she did a transition to making these really large um, paintings, which one is in the show Encounter, which is about four meters high. Um, I was also thinking about what it meant to sort of give these large scale work space. So when you come into the exhibition, split into two, splitting them into two was to really give each artist enough space that it wasn't a sense that, you know, you came in and you just felt so overwhelmed by the scale of the work and the amount of work. I thought that, um, I felt really strongly that, okay, if we split the show into two and because there are these two um, really sort of obvious ways to divide the show, it's a way to sort of, yeah, just let the paintings breathe more, um, give each artist um, a spotlight in their own right, even though as a whole over the two parts, it's a larger conversation. It's like a micro survey really about painting by a young generation, a sort of very current generation of painters. So that was a very sort of practical, but also in terms of just giving the show um, enough op opportunity to sort of, for everybody to experience it, um, it, it made sense to divide the show into two. And then also, you know, what became really interesting, especially in the first part of the show uh, with artists like Tunji Adeni Jones, Johnny Negron, Sarah Slappy, Yu Young Choi, um, Johnny Negron. These are artists who, most of them live in New York, actually. They know each other early in their career. One or two of them had shown together. So it's quite interesting for them to come together again, quite unexpectedly, actually, in this exhibition and you know, the, their works are having a conversation again, even though for some of them it'd been some time that the works had been together. Um, so that that wasn't intentional, but, you know, that sort of happened um, coincidentally in, in a way. But I guess when people live in a particular place, have gone to a particular school, then there are crossovers. Um, for part two of the exhibition, you know, one thing that also became apparent when we started sort of when I started thinking about this separation between the two shows is that the artists who were working with landscape and nature and still life, they're all female artists. Um, so it's quite interesting to have the second part of the exhibition where it was female artists dealing with abstraction, dealing with still life, dealing with landscape, which in art history, these are like, uh, in Western art history, I should say, these are tr um, typically very male dominated. Mm -hmm. And now we have a show where it's w women rewriting and reclaiming that history in a sense, which is really um, incredible and exciting to have this perspective, actually, an all-female perspective on this um, age-old um, style, age styles of painting. A lot of the artists in the show actually identity is one part of the of what they do, but it's not like the main focus for a lot of the artists. Um, and in a sense, you know, you do have this. I, I think probably what is more prominent is that there's a diaspora um, connection between a lot of the artists. So you have artists who are um, South Korean of Korean um, nationality who are now living and working in the U.S. Um, and also the experiences of having these dual lived experiences comes into the work in, in a particular way, certain ways, or, or certain ways of thinking about making work and one's place in the world. So that's a very strong line, I would say. Um, you have other artists who are contemplating things in a more um, looking at their self, and, and their, their, their surroundings. So Olala, for example, has always lived in Kanagawa in Japan. This is where she grew up. Um, a lot of the work is inspired by um, living in the same place your whole life, yeah, and becoming a mother, you know, thinking of like domesticity, um, just thinking about the different tensions, um, even in a familiar setting, you know, what are the kinds of different tensions that exist? You see this in her still lives where She's pairing household objects like her um, children's toys with foodstuffs. Um, and just thinking of this sense that, you know, in some of this juxtaposition, some of these objects she's bringing together, like in everyday life, perhaps they don't always come together, but because in motherhood, some things are sitting side by side. So for example, there's a painting where she, there's a model of Darth Vader with a banana 
which doesn't really make sense because one is from a world of like science fiction, fantasy. The other one is just like sustenance. But, you know, the home space is chaotic in her, in her sense. And she's trying to make sense of these kinds of things. Um, Michaela Yewudan, you know, her paintings are completely abstracted. There's a lot of emphasis on materials. Um, she's abstracting symbolism from everyday life, um, from queerness, um, from queer flags, from bl black identity, carnival culture, um, from thinking about spaces of well-being and joy. Um, and then also introducing elements of her practice isn't just painting. She works with ceramics, um, sculptures, um, bringing these sort of like details of another practice into the painting, um, putting things like beading, ceramics, introducing text. Some of her writing comes into um, the painting. So there's a collapse of different thoughts, multi-layered. There's never this sort of like one direct, straightforward way of reading things. Gahi Park is another example as well. A lot of Gahi's thinking into, into a huge proportion of her work was um, thinking about leaving Korea, Seoul, to come to the US to study. She didn't understand the language. And she was often sort of thinking of this perspective of an outsider. You know, what happens when you're navigating a space where you don't really understand the conversation. And then she was thinking of this perspective of animals and human beings, like imagining being a cat in a room where there's this whole world going on around you that, you know, you're not, well, you can't sort of communicate in a direct way. What would it mean to present this perspective? So we see this sort of surrealism of um, surreal world and surreal interaction of humans and non-humans. Observa observations from real life, but not directly drawn from real life. All of them coming together in painting in a really um, interesting way. So back to your question, there are elements of um, one's identity informing the work, but there's also a different range of experiences. Um, they're all very sort of like complex, multi-layered in meaning, uh, and in some cases, material of, of, of the paintings that we see in um, public-private part two. Um, I mean, I don't think it's anything new that artists of the present are always sort of, you know, thinking of ways to, I guess, either rethink the past or sort of question parts of the past that um, are in, in lots of ways problematic. As I mentioned before, um, when we think of who's represented within the history of Western painting, painting in general, it's usually um, usually white men, European. Um, these are, you know, these were sort of placed in a higher, um, in a hierarchy compared to other parts of the world. A lot of places that were developing at the same time, their own language and movement were ignored. That is changing. Um, gaps in the history of art and history broadly, you know, is being challenged. You know, people are sort of saying, no, this isn't a complete history. We need to think of a history that is more global, that includes many voices, that includes people from different parts of the world, different genders, different um, ethnicities. Um, so that is something that, artists have always done. Artists are these, in my view, you know, they really sort of critique society. They've always sort of looked at that perspective that perhaps not we're not all looking at. Um, and, you know, in terms of sort of, I guess if by definition um, we think of a landscape, a nature painting, port portraiture, figuration, um, what is the other genre in this show? Abstraction. Um, as looking a certain way because they were defined by certain artists or certain movements. What does it mean to sort of step away from that and make it your own? You bring your own individuality, your own experiences into it, which is what all of these artists are doing. There's a level of bringing themselves into the work or, or certainly their perspective into the work. Um, and this is across both exhibitions. This is the real, um, for me, a, a real sort of, um, uniting, but then also expansive. Um, so it's looking in, but then given a sort of wider perspective on this um, genre or, you know, or, or this idea of what history painting could be or what the future of painting could be really. 
for example, um, with Hayley Barker, um, I mean, she's working with oil and linen and sort of dealing with landscapes. And I guess the history of landscape painting in, in, in certain movements is that you would sort of get these artists who were studying in, I, I'm thinking here of the French Impressionists, who were sort of, you know, in the city, and then they would go out into the countryside and depict with Impressionist ideas, um, you know, the sort of countryside, you, you know, the landscape, all of these kind of things, flowers, these kind of things. But with Hayley Barker, um, and, and, and also the idea that there was a level of privilege in that, but with Hayley Barker, she comes from a, a quite poor working class California background. Um, and for her, the landscape was little pockets of greenery in Los Angeles. It wasn't going out to the countryside or going out to a sort of um, open landscape, exactly remote landscape. It was looking for these, a back garden, you know, a public park. This is what she depicts. But then she sort of um, expands this frame. So, you know, there's these massive canvases that she paints of a, it's quite stunning actually, this sort of delicate use of oil on canvas. You still see the canvas, but she's depicting really quite small enclosures that gave her calm, mm -hmm. that gave her respite from the difficulties of city life. Um, so it's quite interesting having that transference from what that genre would be historically to this more contemporary, okay, I'm going to find calm and solace and nature in the density of an urban city. Um, with someone like Sarah Lee, a nature, you know, all of her paintings are really sort of thinking about capturing nature and the landscape. Um, massive expansive fields. Um, before before this painting she did in the show Radiance, most of her palette was of the night sky, this sort of blue black light, um, and just the disappearance of light capturing that moment. And here we see um, the sun emerging across the field, the flower field. But there's also this. It's almost like her pictures. They look as if they've been made digitally, actually, they're so bright, you know, this sort of um, almost like hyper real, you know, almost like this, I guess, like blend between painting and then the digital image as well. But she's, you know, they are, they are paintings, but they have this sort of hyper real digitally rendered quality. That's also something very interesting and new because um, how do you make something look unrealistic? Mm -hmm through paint, you know, this sort of technique of really sort of pushing beyond the medium itself. Well, I mean, it's it's both. In both cases, it's both. Um, with Sarah, she's drawing on both. She's trying to sort of capture, because also, I guess, when we start thinking of the future of painting and how, you know, some artists are working digitally, you know, painting things with the computer. And in future, there's going to be a whole conversation around like authenticity of images. Um, Sarah is manipulating that through paint herself, you know, really sort of working this composition. It's making you question um, reality and the digital and sort of bringing these two together. So the historic and the contemporary together in her painting. With um, Baka, you know, this whole range of um, landscape history from Impressionists to someone like Van Gogh also she was looking at. And she's sort of, in a way, sort of stripping that back with her work. They're very delicate. You know, she's not sort of um, overemphasizing. There's less color. There's, there's more of a sort of muted palette. There's not this journey into a remote. It's like, how can you find this? In, in, in it, wherever you are, especially, well, in her case, she lives in her city. How can you sort of recreate this sort of um, language of history painting, but now based on like the context of where you are through observation, through painting, through delicacy of hand on canvas, these kinds of things.